There are several new treatments for brain tumors that are promising, the most interesting of which is immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is a mechanism in which you're trying to use the body's immune system to fight a tumor. The problem has always been that the tumor arises from your tissues, so your immune system does not recognize it as foreign as it would an infection with bacteria that aren't supposed to be there. So the trick is to now find some antigen or some particle within the tumor or on the surface of the tumor that can then be used to stimulate the body's immune system. There are many different ways of doing this. Most of them involve vaccines. The vaccine trial that we have here at Jefferson utilizes an antisense moiety that is then used to disrupt mRNA production and kill off the tumor cells. This has been used here at Jefferson for phase one trials in initially recurrent glioblastoma, and then more recently in what we call upfront at the time of diagnosis glioblastoma. The results are very promising, and we are working with the FDA to get this into a multi-institutional phase two trial in the near future, probably within the year. MRI-guided laser ablation, or laser interstitial thermal therapy, we call LIT, L-I-T-T, is another mechanism we have of treating brain tumors. If you look at radiosurgery, we use external beams of radiation to destroy a tumor. With LIT, what we do is we take the patient to the operating room and very accurately, stereotactically, place a fiber optic cable into the tumor. The patient is then taken to the MRI scanner where the fiber optic cable is attached to a laser device that we can then monitor through the MRI scanner. The MRI machine is turned on and we can use thermal imaging software to follow a heat production. So what a laser does is it actually cooks the tumor from inside out. So the fiber optic cable is placed within the tumor and it can then be manipulated and rotated so that we can cover the whole tumor volume. And we raise the temperature to 42 degrees, which will destroy any uh, protein within the tumor. And then in this case, it turns the tumor into just dead scar tissue. So it's a way of actively destroying or actually removing the tumor from the brain without having to open up the skull with standard radi with standard surgical techniques. Obviously, each patient has to be approached in a very individual fashion. Uh, it's based on the tumor, it's based on the location, it's based on the needs of the patient. You're going to be much more judicious in approaching a tumor in the language area for somebody who uh, their job is to communicate with people. Or professional mus musicians, you have to be careful of their hearing. But in many cases, it's a matter of what we call eloquent versus non-eloquent locations in the brain. In non-eloquent brains, that is relatively unimportant parts of the brain, you can be more aggressive than you can in eloquent areas. In language areas, uh, we would uh, do intraoperative language mapping with the patient awake what we call a wake anesthesia technique. Um, in tumors near the strength areas of the brain, we can directly stimulate the brain and map out the motor area so that we don't make them weak or give them a stroke. Right now, there are not good areas of mapping out vision short of using what's called DTI imaging in which we can see the actual optic radiations going back to the occipital lobes. But the tumors frequently will disrupt DTI tract imaging on the MRI scanner, so that is still a work in progress. I'm Dr. Kevin Judy. My mission at Jefferson is to improve lives. Mm -hmm.